Hi. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you guys how to make a grid material. This is really helpful for white boxing and figuring out your metrics for your game. Uh, this is a really common level design tool, tool, so it's really good to know. So I just have a basic Unreal project open um, just to show you guys how this works. I'm just going to come down here in my content browser and right click and we're going to make a new material and I'm just going to call this M for material and grid uh, and we'll open that up I'll drag that here for a second um, before I get too far with that I am also going to go and I've put this uh, file in the description below uh, this T underscore grid that's our grid texture uh, simple thing I just made in Illustrator real quick. And that's going to be the texture we're going to use for our grid. So I'm going to open up this material. And first thing I want to add is a texture. And if you just right click and start typing, that'll come up. A texture object, not a texture sample. Uh, it won't work with the texture sample. So texture object, uh, change the default texture here to the one we just dragged in, grid. And in order to get this to wrap really nicely, um, we're going to do something called world aligned texture. So you just right click, search for that. And I'm going to plug my texture into the texture object. Uh, now, the next thing we need to do is tell it what size this texture should be. And so I'm going to hold down one on my keyboard, like the number one, and left click, and that'll make what's called a constant. You can also get to that by just typing constant, and those are the same thing. Basically, this is just a number that we can plug into a value. So I'm gonna plug this into texture size, and over here on the left, set that value to 100, and that'll just make sure that um, this is a hundred unreal units, so that means this grid texture will be mapped um, every 100 un unreal units, which is one meter, which is probably the most common level design size. Uh, and then the other thing we need to do for this is get our world position, and it should be under coordinates right here. It should be a little red guy. I'm going to plug that into world position. Uh, and I'm just going to select all that move it over. Um, now the next thing we need to do, well you can see if we plug this into base color, so the XYZ texture into base color, um, then we can see our grid applied. And generally it's good practice with materials to have a base grid uh, and then to make different color variants, so I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to right click and type multiply. You can also hold M and left click and that'll make a multiply node. Um, you're just going to plug in, I don't think it matters which is which since it's multiplying, but I'm going to plug my XYZ texture into the top, into A, and then I'm going to right click and do a vector parameter and we'll just call that color. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to let us make material instances and change this color so that we can have, you know, a green and a red and a blue or whatever we want. So I'm just going to plug this into B and then plug this output into base color here at the top. And because this is a parameter, this means that we can edit it outside of this material so we don't have to come back in here to... Um, mess with that. Right now nothing's showing up because it's a black material so I'm just gonna drag that. I'm gonna do like kind of a mid gray here and there's our grid. You can see that showing up. Um, the other thing I like to do with these materials is again hold down one, left click, um, plug this into roughness. I like to be able to mess with the roughness. What the roughness is is like how glossy the material is um, I'm going to right click on that node, convert to parameter, I'm just going to call this roughness, uh, just in case I want something a little more glossy. 
Sometimes that can have a good look. You can do the same for metallic if you want. Uh, I'm not going to, but you can again just left click, make a constant, plug that into metallic, and uh, convert that to a parameter. So that is really mu pretty much it. I'm just going to save that. Now in here, uh, back in my map, I can just drag this material onto an object and there is our grid texture. Beautiful. And I can check the size of this real quick, see if it's actually one meter. The default cube in Unreal is one meter, so that should be exactly one meter because we set that world size. And the cool thing about this is, so if I drag this grid onto this cube, um, this is going to keep the same scale uh, no matter what I do with this cube. So I can scale this cube up and you can see it's not stretching out our grid, it's just um, it's using world grid space. So you can see, oh, okay, this is one, two, three, four meters high, just like this dude. Now if I want a different color, what I'm going to do is find my base grid material and at this point you just want to not mess with that anymore probably. I'm just going to right click, create material instance, and I'm just going to call this mgrid blue. So usually you'd want to make one for every color that you want to use, like if you're going to have uh, brown and green for a tree then you can do this. Now if I double click on that material instance then here are my settings right up here in the right and you can see those change in real time. So if I click on the color box and then click on that, then I can change this to a nice green. Um, but since this is my blue material, let's make it blue. Won't pull any funny business. And I'm also gonna change my roughness more to like 0.7. So roughness is always just between zero is no roughness, which means it's gonna be super glossy. And one is gonna be uh, full roughness, which you can tell it's like a very matte color. So I'm going to do like a 0.7 maybe, um, so that it has a little bit of shine to it. Actually, I'm going to go to the other end. Um, maybe a 0.4. Anyway, you can mess with that and get it the way you want it. Then just save that, come back into your map, and here's my instance, and I can drag that right onto this. And there we go. So now I have a little four meter thing. So what I'll do sometimes when I'm level designing is I'll drop down a cube, um, set my snap size. Um, so let's say I wanted to test my jump, my jump length or my jump height. Just make a little cube that I can run on. Um, need to move that. There we go. And now I can run over here. So I know that's four meters, or is that? Uh, that's about four and a half. So if I jump, okay. So we need to go even farther than that. So it looks like my jump is about six, which makes sense because my move speed is probably still set to default to six. So setting the scale to six, I drag this so it's nice and aligned. And, oh. Maybe it's a bit longer than six. It's more like it's eight. So let's try that. Anyway, so that's how you get the basic grid set up. Um, now you can use this to test your metrics. Yep, so that's about eight meters. And then I can add a little text render here on the ground. And just rotate that. And say jump length eight meters. Make this black so it sticks out. And now I can just scale that up. And so now I have a nice little reference. So if a designer comes in here, they can see exactly how long the jump length is and design for that. So yeah, that's how you make world aligned textures and kind of how you set up a world for uh, metrics testing. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below.